Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the e-commerce series using Django. In this one, we'll get started working with the PayPal payments. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully, we enjoy the video and learn something new. So, let's get started. Begin by opening up your code editor. And the very first thing that we will have to do is open up the checkout HTML. And you can see that down here, I have imported the CDNs that we'll be using. And here is where you have to add your client key, which is here. For now, I'll be using the test one and my currency is USD, all right? So now that we have all this, the very first thing is change to change up this button that we have here. Let me make sure that my server is still running. There you go, I will open this up. Okay, you see, we firstly need to change this button that says pay with PayPal, and we need to render PayPal payments buttons down here. So to render that button, it's actually quite simple. Just create a div that has an ID of, and let's call this one PayPal button container. Okay, and after we have this, let's go ahead and render that but Let's render the PayPal button onto this place that we initially had this. So right now, if you reload this page, um, I'm waiting for that to complete the reloading. See, this is what we have, nothing showing up over here. So all we need to do now is create a script down here. I'll create a script. And the very first thing will be to go ahead and call PayPal.button and it should look like this so we we start by creating a new order so create order i got all this from paypal documentation okay and actually tweaked it so it works as we expect i'll add in data and function and actions parameter there in the function and i want to return actions dot order dot create which pretty much calls a paypal api to create a new order and that API needs a couple of data. For example, it needs the purchase units, which in our case will look like this. Then we open, wait, let me go up so you can see. So purchase units, and we open up a uh, square bracket and also a dictionary in there. And the dictionary is gonna take an amount and we open up another dictionary that will take a value parameter and take the actual, the actual, order price so we say order dot price all right that one is done so just below the create order you can add a comma here and then call the unapprove api so for this one i'll add in function data and actions actions actually like adding actions here i guess not that should be actions okay On approve this should be a colon there so now we need to call the capture API so return actions dot order dot cap sure cap sure dot then after we capture it what do we want to get back the the response will be returned to us in a details parameter that is what we want to pass in here. And actually, in case you don't know, this is how this code looks. We, we break this apart to look like that. You can also still break this one apart. But maybe putting it on the same line is going to make it make more sense, I guess. So after we call the approve API, it will return some response to us. We are pretty much grabbing that response over here in this details parameter. So you could even go ahead and come to log the details to see what we have. And let's check if details dot status, because it will return a field called status. If that status is equal to completed, which means our payments was actually made on Stripe's end, right? Then what we want to do is say window dot location dot href, and we want to push back to the payment success page. So I'm using backtick so that I can append the detail status and things like that. So dot dot slash payment payment 
dash completed and I also want to add the order dot oid and then I want to add the status should be equal to then over here is where I will add the detail dot completed okay not completed status instead so now that we have this that's pretty much everything that we want guys all you need to do is then get down here and you can remove this and pretty much say dot render and we want to render the button onto a div called paypal button container as simple as that then you save your code and let's see what we have all right so i will reload this page and still reloading Okay, it's done reloading, but it seems like it did not actually render the buttons for us as expected. So what is going on? PayPal buttons, that should be buttons, okay? Um, save your code and let's see how this, if this renders. There you go, see now this is rendering. That is nice. You can still add like a style and give a margin top, say some like, I don't know, 50 PX. So that it gives some space from the top see so i'm like that if it's too big you could pretty much make it to be 20px so that it's not too big okay see that is better so pay with stripe paypal and this showing up now when you hit the pay paypal you see this opens up but can you see that it shows this blank page here and when it opens up i really do not like this blank page and there is one line of code that you could use to remove this when using django so when using django to remove that, I'll open up settings py and just below the allowed host, I'll add this code secure underscore cross underscore origin underscore opener underscore policy should be equal to same dash origin dash allow dash pop-ups so it doesn't show an issue or prevents pop-ups from happening. So when you've added that in, let's get back to our code um, here and let's reload this page. And There you go. Now when you hit PayPal, can you see it's now opened this up without the without the pop-up showing up? I will go ahead and log into my personal account or personal wallet while still opening up the dev tools so you can see the console log if the payment goes through. And now I will complete purchase. And let's see. Okay, there you go. See, status completed and it redirected us back to this page. This issue here is that it couldn't find this page. Let's open up the call URLs and see the payment URL. So it's payments completed without an OID. All right, that is okay because I'll still show you guys how this works. So now that the payment is coming through, let's go ahead and change up the payments completed page so that it looks even better. Now I'm opening up the payments completed view and this is what we have right now, right? Go ahead and remove all this every other thing here remove this and also remove this whole code now i want to make this even better over here i'll add in an oid parameter and now let's fetch that order that was just paid for from the back end so i'll say order should be equal to cut order dot object dot get where oid is equal to oid simple and the next thing here will be to go ahead and check if order dot paid status if it's still false and the payment has been made then let's go ahead and change it to true so say order dot paid status should now be true okay and please save the order so that changes get saved order dot save and now you can go ahead and return the context that we can pass to the template you know to show some things that like the payments went true i'll pass order over here and i also pass order and for now i believe let's just go with this two that is pretty much what we need right now so this payments completed view in the urls now has to take an oid and a slash okay so after you've added this two if your code re reloads and you refresh this page can you now see payment success and we get this page showing up over here but i want to change up this payment success page don't really like it this should be for the invoice Okay, so how do we get the new payment success page?
So get back to the code and look for the front end main template um, payments completed HTML. Take this now and put it in our own payments completed HTML, which is in the core. So remove all this long redundant code and pretty much pass this in. And now when you reload the page, you see payments completed. Your order has been successfully placed. Then we have our order ID showing up here. So order ID is supposed to be order.oid, which means that context is not yet been passed to the template. Pass context in here so that you can now see the context data show up here. Like this is the order ID now, you see? All good. I believe this looks more better. For the invoice, we'll use the other page, okay? So with this now, that's pretty much it for PayPal payments. It's working as expected. And I believe that it will continue working on this to improve it and make it even more better. In the next one, we'll get started working with Stripe. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Do make sure to drop a like. Consider subscribing to the channel as it really means the world to me. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, mad love. Peace out.